rausbringen, wie zurück und sehen und This exhibition uh, is particular because it's the final effect of a four months residency program in Italy. The program is structured that every year three curators out of the most recognized internationally curatorial schools are selected for the residency and then do this um, amazing program of studio visits, uh, meetings with art directors, uh, art critics, gallery owners, to discuss their interests, but also to get to know the Italian arts. Uh, so the exhibition is the final product of a very long research process. Um, we are three curators. Of course, this is not always easy because we have different backgrounds, different ideas uh, about art, about what an exhibition is, what the role of a curator is, but we have to work together. And I guess this is a very important aspect of the residency because the art world, the world of the institutions, it's about collaboration. So you have to learn to do that. And it turned out actually quite well. Uh, the other two curators are Molly Everett and Tenzing Barshi. We developed this idea through travel travels. The title is Passo de Papasso and it deals with artistic migrations and artistic travels. So basically it means that we were interested in how Italian artists perceive their possibility to travel, perceive their chances of mobility, where do they want to go, where they don't want to go. Um, so that was a kind of starting point for the whole show, which, um, as it turned out, uh, included different generations of artists. Um, we start from artworks from the 20s. Fortunato de Perro was a very important uh, figure for us. He was an Italian futurist who um, uh, spent two years in New York uh, between 28 and 30. was very hopeful about this experience. He hoped that would greatly influence his career and create new possibilities for him. But actually, as it turned out, uh, it was a great disillusionment. So the myth of America didn't turn out as, as he imagined that. And coming back to, to Italy in the 30s and 40s, he actually developed a very conservative viewpoint, a very conservative perspective. He sided with the ultra-nationalistic government of Benito Mussolini. So we were interested in these two moments, this moment of globality represented by his travels to New York and this moment of coming back home and actually looking back to the roots, to the tradition, also developing this very conservative uh, viewpoint. And this of course is um, somehow what we are experiencing nowadays in our contemporary world. The Cages for Migratory Birds by Elisa Caldana are those sculptural objects where the artists took away parts of the cages so to underline their futility now they can't um, enclose anymore any birds which again kind of take us back to the accordion to this willingness of movement that cannot be enclosed that it's almost like a force you, you can't really stop and um, the video is again uh, a video by Elisa it goes together with, uh, with the map. And this is maybe the only way, because generally the exhibition deals with artist travels, and, uh, but this is the only work that deals with the migrant issue as we are experiencing it nowadays. The perspective is uh, as if you were on a boat uh, approaching the line of the horizon. But actually the whole point of the video is that you will never see the island. So this is like an endless waiting to see finally land, but in fact you can see only the sea and this um, almost the illusion of a horizon but that, that brings no hope. This almost futility of, of hoping is, is something which I also feel uh, characterizes so much contemporary artists. We also had artists from older generations like a beautiful Carla Carr, the Sikofoy painting, which is almost like the end of the whole exhibition, but it somehow symbolizes this energy. We we'll always have the urge to move, to change, to move elsewhere. It's immortal. The Salvo uh, artworks we decided to include in the show, and the Luigi Antani piece, The Lips. All those artists coming from the 60s, 70s, and 80s, 
uh, somehow all of them envision this new social spaces. So Akari, for instance, was associated with the feminist movement and she envisioned how that could create perhaps a new space um, just for women but also for art practices. Louis Giuntani also is, is linked to this aesthetic of joyfulness and also this element of queer uh, identity which again uh, could possibly bring new spaces to the social sphere um, and Salvo with, with uh, his idealized uh, Italian and Mediterranean uh, landscapes which again show a possibility of a different reality um, which, which was possible. Perhaps it's important to underline that this hope that was shared by the generation of Accardi, Montani and Salvo is it's almost absent in the younger generation of artists, which is just a sober reminder of uh, the reality we are living in right now.